now we are going to discuss how to tackle the scenario for the double support phase. Now, during the double support phase actually both the feet are on the ground. Now, here let us see how to take care and how to carry out this particular the analysis during the double support phase. Now, during the double support phase, so this particular foot is on the ground. Similarly, this particular foot is also on the ground and this is nothing but the staircase. So, the staircase is denoted by, so this is this is nothing but your the staircase. So, this is the staircase. Now, here uh, the way I discuss, so L 1 M 1 are the length and mass of the first link that is the foot. Similarly, we have got L 2 M 2 length and mass for the second, L 3 and M 3 for the third, L 4 and M 4 that is length and mass for the fourth link, M 5 and L 5 for the fifth, M 6 and L 6 for the sixth one and L 7 and M 7 are the length and mass for the, the foot. Now, here to tackle this your dynamic support phase, it is it is bit difficult and actually what it do is now here the trunk mass this particular M 4 has got significant influence on your the dynamic balance margin. Now, what you will have to do is the moment this particular biped robot is working on the plane surface. So, what you can do is, so this particular M 4 we can distribute or divide into two equal parts okay. and the moment it is negotiating. So, this type of staircase, so this particular M 4 I can divide into two parts, but the two parts will not become equal. Now, why do you need it? For the purpose of analysis of this double support phase, we will have to assume that, that this is consisting of two single support phases and we have already seen how to carry out the analysis for this particular the single support phase. So, what we do is, so this particular DSP is actually assumed to be consisting of two single support phases SSPs and for each of these particular SSP. So, we try to carry out your the dynamic analysis, we try to find out what should be that particular the ZMP point. Okay. Now, let us see how to carry out this particular the analysis. Now, as I told that this particular trunk mass that is M 4 has got significant influence on the balance. So, what I do is, so we take the projection of this on the ground for this trunk mass and what we do is, we try to find out what is the distance between say this particular point that is your the, the, the edge of the leg to this particular point and similarly, we try to find out edge of this particular leg or the foot from this particular projected point of the your the trunk mass. And supposing that this is denoted by capital X 1 and this is denoted by capital X 2. Now, if I know this capital X 1 and X 2, now I can distribute this particular M 4 into two parts. Now, supposing that X 1 is equals to X 2, that means your the biped robot is working on the plane surface. Now, in that case we can find out that is M 4 1 is nothing but what M 4 1 will be equal to your. So, M 4 1 will be equal to uh, this particular expression that is M 4 M 4 M 4 x 2 divided by x 1 plus x 2 and similarly, M 4 2 is nothing but M 4 x 1 divided by x 1 plus x 2. Now, if I get x 1 equals to x 2, so definitely M 4 1 will become equal to M 4 2. That means, whenever it is working on the, the plane surface, so M 4 1 will become equal to M 4 2. 
but the moment it is negotiating the staircase or it is crossing the ditch or some uneven terrain. So, in that case, so this particular m 4 1 and m 4 2 are not equal and your so this particular m 4 1 m 4 1 becomes not equal to your m 4 2 and supposing that it is negotiating the staircase. Now, in that case m 4 1 and m 4 2 could be say 40 percent 60 percent of m 4 or they could be 30 percent 70 percent of this particular the m 4. Now, once you got this particular the numerical value for this m 4 and m 1. So, very easily what you can do is we can consider. So, this particular double support phase is nothing but a combination of two single support phases. For example, say one phase will be something like this. So, this is one single support phase. So, this will be something like this okay, and this is one mass. Similarly, I have got one mass here, I have got one mass here, I have got one mass here. So, this is nothing but a single support phase. Similarly, on the right hand side, so I can consider another single support phase. And once you have got this particular single support phase, so by following the same principle, so what I can do is I can carry out. So, this particular I can find out what should be the, the ZMP point. Now, for example, say if I concentrate on so this particular your uh, the single support phase. So, this is one single support phase. So, for this particular single support phase, so I can find out the ZMP and this particular ZMP is denoted by this. So, this is the ZMP. Similarly, for this particular double another single support phase which is nothing but this, this is one link, this is another link, another link, another link. So, this is nothing but is your the ZMP point and this is your x ZMP. Now, remember so this particular x ZMP is nothing but a vector and I can also find out what should be the magnitude, what should be the, the direction. And we assume that, so this particular your the reaction force, the ground reaction force whenever the biped robot is working on a ground or it is negotiating some staircase, there should be some reaction force. And this particular ground reaction force is going to act through this particular ZMP. Now, and due to this ground reaction force only we are able to work. So, this is the point through which the ground reaction force will work and as I told that this is nothing but a vector. So, this indicates the ground reaction force and it is passing through the ZMP. Now, if I extend, so this particular your uh, this particular straight line, so I will be getting something like this and this vector if I extend. So, I will be getting something like this and these two straight lines are going to intersect at this particular the point. And we take the projection of this particular intersection point on the ground and that indicates actually. So, this particular point indicates the system ZMP that is x ZMP comma system. Now, uh, once again I am just going to concentrate on the single support phase and the double support phase and how to maintain the balance. Now, during the single support phase supposing that, so this is the ground foot. Okay. Now, if the x z m p point or the z m p point if it is lying within this particular the ground foot ground region then only the dynamic balance is maintained, but if it goes outside the balance is going to be lost. Now, if I consider one double support phase something like this. So, this is one ground foot and this is say another ground foot. Now, here so the shape region is denoted by this. So, this is nothing but the shape region. So, this shape region if I just draw. So, the shape region is nothing but is nothing but this. So, this is nothing but the shape region. Now, this particular system ZMP, 
So, this system Z m p should fall within this particular safe region then only the dynamic balance will be maintained. Otherwise, it is going to lose the balance and it is going to fall. Now, in a particular working cycle whether it is in single support phase or in double support phase the balance has to be maintained at the same time during the transition of single support phase and the double support phase. So, that particular balance has to be maintained then only it will be able to maintain its balance balance in a particular the working cycle. So, this is the way actually the, the biped robot uh, maintains balance uh, during the, the working and this is how to determine the, the Z m p during the double support phase this I have already discussed little bit. Now, here I am just going to show you some stick diagram that a biped robot having 7 degrees of freedom is negotiating the staircase during the single support phase. So, one foot is on the, the ground and the other foot is in air. This is another stick diagram where the same 7 degrees of freedom biped robot is negotiating the staircase and here both the feet are on the, the ground. Now, I am just going to uh, we are going to show you uh, one real experiment on a very simple biped model. Now, I am just going to discuss the different components of the biped robots which we have in our lab and uh, actually this is nothing but the very simple biped robot and we can see that. So, here we have got two servo motors. So, the servo motors we can see. So, this is one servo motor, this is another servo motor, it is a very simple model. Now, with the help of this particular servo motor, so we can control the movement in the, the forward and the backward direction. Similarly, with the help of this particular servo motor and with the help of this these two tilt rod. So, we can actually uh, go for we can lift and we can place the foot of this particular the biped robot and here we have got actually one uh, microcontroller. So, with the help of that so we can control the pre programmed motion uh, actually we can control we can run. Now, here if you see the area of this particular foot is much larger compared to the overall dimension of this very simple setup. Now, the purpose is actually which I have already discussed so that we can get more safer region to maintain its dynamic balance. So, that we can get uh, during the double support phase or the single support phase we can get the larger area for the safe region and that is why the your the dimension of this particular foot has been kept somewhat larger even compared to the overall dimension of this particular the setup. Now, with the help of this particular very simple biped mod model. So, we are going to show you like how to generate the forward and the backward movement uh, or how to how can it work on the plane surface in the forward direction and in the, the backward direction. So, now we are going to show you that particular experiment. Ah. Now, it is showing the forward movement of the biped robot and now it is moving in the backward direction. Thank you.